The Igbos and the Yorubas were one people until the white man came. As a matter of fact, the land we find ourselves today known as Nigeria is not truly our land. And we are not Nigerians. We are of the root of Israel. In this video, I'll show you everything that you need to understand regarding the issue of Igbos and Yorubas. But before I start, I would like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kodash. Now, Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, and other names. His true name is Yahweh Shai, and this language is the is the Paleo Hebrew, also known as the Lashawan Kadash. That was the language we used to speak when we were in Israel. Okay, my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS. Those are the men that taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this gospel in all sincerity in these last days. Shalom, which means peace unto you also. To the few sisters, aquats, who are sincerely seeking this truth. I'm doing this lesson because of a comment that I received from a dear sister yesterday. You know, she told me she was of the Igbo tribe and I was really happy about that. And I tried to explain to her that she's not, she's not, she's not of the Igbo tribe. She's of the tribe of Judah. Okay. She's a daughter of Israel. Now I'm going to start off by reading I have some some excerpts that I kept aside for this lesson. So this is from Sahara reporters. They did a, a nice report on do the Igbos and do the Igbo and Yoruba know they are sons of Odudua by Frederick Mwabufo. It says in other words the Yoruba and Igbo are indigenous to the geographical area called Nigeria and it has also been argued that both groups are of a singular ancestry. Now, in this lesson, I'm going to bring out the points, share you some history with you, some history that I wouldn't teach you in school, okay? And, you know, we'll filter it through the scriptures. And hopefully, this is going to be edifying through the spirit and power of the Most High, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kodash. Now, Rukaku Dash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the full understanding of this truth, which is a token, a gift from our Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, I really don't know what's going on right now. I don't know why it's not opening. Read more. There we go. What's this? Close. Excuse me, this thing is acting out. Okay, okay, there we go. So it says, it starts by saying, and the supreme being commissioned Odudua, a sky god, to carry out a terrestrial task. It descended from heaven with a cockerel which had six fingers, and the earth was made by him through the indigenous, indigenous deployment. Of his vain, vain avian subject. What's the meaning of avian? Let me just look it up real quick. It says relating to bird, to birds. Now we know this is a fable. This is what is left of this people. This is what they remember about their past. Okay. It says, but but that was after Atewaro had sprinkled some dirt on the ocean to, fa to found Elife. And he had wives and sons who founded, who founded other kingdoms. So the mystic, the mythic origin of the Yoruba says, so the mythic origin of the Yoruba says, so the Yorubas, they actually believe that they had this deity that came and walked down from the sky. You know, he had a terrestrial task, you know, and the Igbos believe in Igbo mythic origin, the supreme being sent Eddie down to, to earth 
to establish balance and social order. The sky god founded Nri, and he had wives and sons who founded other Igbo towns and communities. So he says the Yoruba and Igbo share a lot more than similar mythic origin. So you see their 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 stories are what they believe is they believe they believe very similar things okay as a matter of fact they believe the same thing but this is due to the fact that they've lost they've lost the true knowledge of who they are due to many things now we had a, a covenant that we had with the father being hebrew israelites when we came out from the land of egypt after serving i believe 400 years under the captivity of the egyptians we were given the laws and the statues and we were, we were told if we would break any of these laws you know we'll be sold into the hands of our enemies and many other causes came alongside with that covenant now here you can see that this is real ignorance and this story that i'm reading here it's very similar to what another tribe of the israelites who find themselves on the americas that's um that's the the northern tribe because the jews consist of three tribes okay people that are called jews they consist of three tribes that's benjamin levi and judah okay because they're the the house of israel separated after the death of um king solomon and they became two different house, houses and they were rivalries okay they were rivalries now the northern tribe they were the first to be carried away captivity and they found themselves in in america okay we have an account of that in the book of um is it second exodus the the 13th chapter if i'm not mistaken okay it speaks of how they decided to leave the hiddens and go down to the americas so they got to the Americas and they have a certain kind of folklore and believe also that they have this God coming down from the sky and establishing law and order, bringing peace and all that, you know. So you can see they have the same similar belief and that's the same thing the Yorubas and the Igbos, they also believe. Now, from the Igbos and the Yoruba comes other tribes. You know the shakiri the benin and all that the rest of all the old tribes of nigeria apart except from the fulanis okay i repeat the fulanis are the they are the they are the real owners of that land okay and they believe and they belong to the um to the to the ethiopians the sons of ham we're going to get that real soon but before going there you know i just wanted to point out you know how this 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 belief was turned around now they forgot the names of, of of their power you know because they started following the gods of the different lands where they found themselves you know from time to time if you stop worshiping the true power you know if you go into captivity the more the year passes the more you start losing all this knowledge and this knowledge was taken away from them now this supreme being that they're talking of is the son of the most high the one whom the world ignorantly calls jesus you know because jesus is a renaissance name jesus is not his true name jesus is a greek name okay he was a hebrew israelite of the tribe of judah and he has a hebrew israelite name and that name is yahweh shai that is the only name you can call to get salvation okay that name Jesus was brought by the so-called white man and the letter J never existed until 1524 by an Italian man named Jean Tricino. So who they're speaking of, that God that came from the sky is speaking of Yahweh Shai, our savior. Because you know, after his death, he ascended into the sky, you know, and he said that the way um, his apostles have seen him ascending into the sky, that's the same way he's going to come back and ascending into the sky if you receive it because this is going to be another lesson speaking of the clouds that took our savior you know that those clouds are the so-called ufos okay those are the chariots of the angels this is a truth that's not taught in uh, in the churches because the churches are really blind to this truth uh, we call them plantation christianity okay because 
that doctrine that's been taught in the church is all the so-called white man's doctrine. Okay? Now, this is the book of um, Colossians. I'll start from the first chapter. I'll read the 12th verse, which says, Giving thanks unto the Father, Yahweh, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, the power of darkness is the power that's ruling on earth today. If you read the book of Job, the ninth chapter, I think the 24th verse, it tells you that the, the, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So we are under the rulership of the wicked, the wicked seed, in which their biblical nationality is Esau, Edom. And that's the so-called white man that you see that's ruling the world today. Okay, the Bible speaks about those people. They are not white men because that's a self proclaimed identity identity they gave themselves okay there is no white person you have only different shades of brown and different shades of red that's the red man okay and the account of his birth is written in the book of um, genesis the 25th chapter okay now going back he says he says giving thanks unto the father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light and who are the saints the saints are the israelites okay the saints are not the the people that the, these churches they try to let you believe they are that's the book um, book of um psalm is it 50. Khan, this is the book of psalm 50 verse 5 it says gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice now who are the people that made a covenant with the most high yahweh those are the israelites the covenant he had was only with the israelites so in order for you to be a saint you must be first an israelite and the heavens shall declare his righteousness for yahweh is judge himself salah hear O my people and i will speak O israel i will testify against thee I am Yahweh, even thy power, okay? Because we broke that sacrifice and that's how, you know, we lost that opportunity. But we have a second chance, okay? He sent his son to be the perfect sacrifice for us to come back, to come back to the inheritance. So now going back to, to the book of um, Colossians, you know, now we can see that the saints are Israelites, okay? Those are the people that had a covenant with the Most High. It says, It says, Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invincible power, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Now, this is one thing the churches don't also know. You know, at the beginning in, in the book of Genesis, where they see in the beginning was the world, uh, when they say in the beginning God created this. The word God there in the Hebrew is Allahayam. And it's a plural, okay? The yam makes it plural. It's talking about powers, man. And that was Yahweh Shai, his son, and 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 the angels that were with him. With him, they created the world, everything, man. The Most High gave them um the the go ahead and the plans of what they had to do, and the son executed everything. The son was the one who created the um the, this world as we see it, you know. So this is what is being told here. He says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. That's, he say, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay, you see this two dots tells you it continues. He says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, for by him were all things created. The word God means powers. 
okay? It says, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So you see, the Son of the Most High created everything. So the Igbos and the Yorubas, they had this knowledge, but they lost this knowledge. Okay? So the, the knowledge became, you know, tainted. It became it became corrupted now they don't they don't know all this again now there is also another precept in the book of um hebrew the book of hebrew um is it's one two it says verse two it says let me start from one it says the most high who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet had in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So you see, the Son of the Most High, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, was the one that made the whole world. Okay, so now going back to the discussion. So you see, they had this knowledge of a power coming from the sky. But they lost all this understanding. That's why they stay they they'll tell you that Odudua came from the sky because they don't re they don't remember all this thing again. The most high purposely took all these things away from them due to captivity, due to slavery. The Israelite never had no, they, ne they never had it easy because each time the most high would save them, they would go back and worship other gods of the rest of the nations in whom he has warned them not to worship. So when they do this, the Most High chasten them and takes them into captivity. But right now we are still under captivity and this captivity is the last captivity. When the Son of the Most High returns this time around to save the sons of Israel and to destroy the wicked, okay, this time around under his kingdom we would not, we would not go into captivity anymore. We would be the kings of this world, man. We would rule over the rest of the nations. Okay, and that's so said the Bible, man. So said the Most High Yahweh Shai. I just don't want to bring up too much scriptures. If not, this lesson will be too long. I haven't even started anything yet. So he says, in Igbo mythic origin, the supreme being Eri, Eri, um, being sent down Eri, um, to Earth to establish balance and social order. And that balance and social order is what Yahweh Shai, our Savior, came to, to, to establish. I say the sky god founded in Ri, and he had wives and sons who founded the Igbo towns and communities. It says, the Yorubas and Igbos share a lot more than similar mythic origin. They are the oldest inhabitants of the areas they live in. In other words, the Yoruba and Igbo are indigenous to the geographical area called Nigeria. And it has also been argued that both groups are of a singular ancestry. You know? So it says... It says two groups have established... The two groups have established trade links dating to the period before contact with the first Europeans. And they are known to share passion for industry. Uh, and, and they are known to share passion for industry, a convivial and accommodating and peace loving, peace loving people. They say also there is no documented history of war between the Igbo and Yoruba, despite occupying the same southern hemisphere. In the pre colonial times, wars among kingdoms and natives were common. But there appear to be no recorded incidents of battle between the clans of the kingdom of the two groups. Okay. Now, all this thing, you see, it says, they, despite having so much in common, politics has been a pesky point of dissonance for both groups. And who, who is the person that came to sow this seed of... of um? of um hatred among these two people is the so-called white man and this goes back into one of the the causes that's found in the book of deuteronomy the 28th chapter which says your eyes shall be evil against thy neighbor you know so it's the causes that's actually going after these people 
that they start hating themselves they don't see themselves they broke off they used to be one people their languages are also strikingly similar man and in this in this place it said also let me see it says in language they are both of qua group niger congo origin the similarities between the yoruba and Igbo language are remarkable if not uncanny which points to an identical font they have a, a, a language that is very very similar okay so now we'll get to the point let me get to the britannica oops what am i what did i just push Let me get to the Britannica. So it says after the British government assumed direct control of the Royal Niger Company territories. And now the word Niger actually means black men. Okay. And that area used to used to be the word Nigeria in itself. <laughs> it, it, it was um I think it was given by the wife of a so-called um, general is it lord lugard or so i can't remember this history real well is it it could be sir frederick lugard okay and she named it nigeria when she was drunk and that nigeria actually means nigger area don't let anyone de deceive you man that's what it means it means nigger area and now that nigger area on the map at the beginning they named that area Negro land. Okay. They named it Negro land. Now the Negroes are, are a different kind of people. You know, they're not the same as the, as the Africans, the real Africans, the real Africans, are the, the Fulanis, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, you know, they have, we have, we have a difference between them. And that's why, you know, from time to time, there is always war between the Fulanis and the rest of the tribes of Nigeria, you know? And they always have that predominance and power, man. They always be in that rulership position because the land actually belongs to them. And it's the white man that has put them, you know, to be as watch guards, um, watch dogs onto us, man. <laughs> so now I'll just pick some few points here because... Now you can go read everything just for time's sake it says now it says following lugard's success in the law in the north it set up the principles of the administrative system subsequently institutionalized as indirect rule essentially local government was to be left in the hands of the traditional chiefs subject to the guidance of the european office officers okay says native institutions were utilized and interference with local custom kept to a minimum so what these white people did as soon as they came was to you know erase erase our our, our culture our traditions and and teach us theirs you know and this is recorded in the scripture in the book of um jeremiah the 17th chapter And the fourth verse it says and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that i gave thee and i will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever and that word forever means for a long time it doesn't literally means forever and ever it means for a long period of time okay so the white men, they came in, you know, the most High is the one actually, you know, running everything, you know, this is his movie, is the one directing, is the one using the white men to do all these things to chasten us. Because, you know, we are stiff-necked people. Israelites are known for their stiff-neckedness, you know. They always want to follow the deities of whichever nation they find themselves. Remember when Moses, you know, went to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments before coming down? 
these people already built a calf and they started worshiping and that's how you have you know our people today they're following the traditions of the so-called white men you know the women has be, uh, have become all harlots you know the men uh, have become effeminate you know everything is just upside down because this is this is the rule of the devils man the so-called white man esau edom they are the devils of the earth now mind you some of our people are mingled amongst those white people they look like the so-called white people because you are the seed of your father okay if a nigerian a so-called nigerian man you know if he if he if he if he sleeps with a, a so-called white woman okay and they have a child that child is of the root of that man because the man owns the seed is the one that gives the seed so in the bible you're known according to the seed of your father man so we have our people looking like the so-called white people they are scattered all around the places but those who are ruling those are the devils the bible speak of so these people they've done all these things you know and you see what you should understand from this britannica right here is they put they put people in power man and those people that are kept in power the motive really behind why they put them in power is because they they use them to control us you know to oppress us to the fullest you get what i'm saying and now before we got into nigeria this is what i want to speak about now before we got into nigeria we were in israel israel is our land okay so what happened how did we get to nigeria there is a story known as the diaspora okay it happened in about 70 a.d you know when the romans came to our land okay and our savior spoke about this time so he says this is um the jewish virtual library ancient jewish history the diaspora so he says the Jewish state comes to an end in 70 AD when the Romans begin to actively drive Jews from the home they had lived for over a millennium. But the Jewish diaspora, diaspora which means dispersion, scattering, had begun long before the Romans had even dreamed of Judea. So that's true because we've been going into different captivities just like I told you at the beginning. Our brothers of the northern tribes who are the so-called Latinos, Native Americans, you know, they are of the tribe of Israel. They were the first people to be carried away, you know, um, captives, okay? And they were the first people to go establish themselves in the, in the Americas. They are not actually the first people to step into America, but they were the first people to establish themselves in the, Ameri in the America and start living there. So that's why they have all those other stories that they have a god coming from the sky to Tonkan. I can't remember the names of those gods, you know. You know, a supreme one coming from the sky, you know, bringing order and peace and all that thing, you know. So before then, the final, the final dispersions came in in 70 AD by the Romans, which are the Edomites, the sons of Esau being spoken of in the Bible. Okay, so you see, let's go down. To save time it says in 63 bc judea became a pro a protectorate of rome can this is where i want to come to it says in 63 bc it says judea became a protectorate of rome exactly what they were doing in in, in nigeria right now in which you know they put all these governors you know to to rule those governors are puppet governors they do the will of 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 the so-called white man you know that's exactly what was going on in judea at that time because the rest of the tribes were already taken captives so now the only land that was left is judea you know which is um which is which is consist of the three tribes just like i told you that's why they are called the jews you know the judah levi and benjamin then you, um, you might have a sprinkle of other tribes amongst them, but it was, you know, majorly consisted of those three tribes. You know, that's why they're called Jews. So in Judea, they had a puppet, a puppet governor of Rome. One of, an example is, um, what's his name? Um, Herod. Herod. 
these were these were these were puppet governors, man. Herod, Philip, you know, Agrippa, other people. They were all they were not Hebrew Israelites, you know, they were Romans. Now it says, and some of the time they would also even put our own people in power. But those are people are doing just the will of those people. Just like today you have in presidency, our people, but these people are doing the will of those who kept them in power. That's simple. It says, coming under the administration of a governor, Judea was allowed a king. The governor's business was to regulate trade and maximize tax revenue. Why the Jews despised the Greeks and the Romans were, and the Romans were a nightmare because the Romans... You know, the, the, the Jews were going, you know, they were catching all hell under these, these people, you know, under their rule, just like we're catching all hell today, paying different kinds of taxes, you know, they come, they, they take our raw materials and bring back crops to us, you know, we're, we're not even paid for, for, for all these things, we're taken as slaves, you know, this is still going on today, man, but in a different level. So this thing was going on also that time, that's why the Bible tells you there is nothing new under the sun. So, it says, governorship were bought at high prices. The governors would attempt to squeeze as much revenue as possible from their regions and pocket as much as they could, even with a Jewish king, the Judeans. You see, and this is exactly what's going on today. The governors, the governors that are in power today, you know, they only care about their, their pockets and the people that kept them in power. You know, that's why you see... Your president of Nigeria can commit all different kinds of atrocities. He can embezzle as much money as he likes. You know, no one holds him responsible for that because, you know, as long as he does what his, um, his, his bosses tell him to do, in which Nigeria, as you see, it is a, is a, is a, what do you call it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um... Let me just put it like this. I'm not finding the word I'm looking for. It's just a property of the British men, you know, just like the rest of West Africa, properties of different European countries, you know. So the sons of Israel, they, 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 they fled out of um, Judea. So what happened, you know, they were catching all this hell and they revolted. That's what we're going to read now. So he says... Where are we? Let me read from here. I said the governors would attempt to squeeze as much revenues as possible from their regions and pocket as much as they could, even with a Jewish king. The Judeans revolted in 70 AD, a desperate revolt that ended tragically. In 73 AD, the last of the revol uh, revolutionaries were holed up in a mountain fort called Masada. And the Romans had besieged the fort for two years. Man, those two years were really painful because people went into, what do you call it? They went into cannibalism, okay? <laughs> they went into cannibalism, eating their own children. And this is exactly what the Romans, they do. They besiege you first. They, they, they get you hungry. They get you thirsty. And this is exactly the same technique they're using to, for us today, but on a different scale. But the people are not saying it. Okay, now all these things that they have, they're bringing, they're, they're the ones pushing the war in Ukraine, you know, all this thing is going to cause, what do you call it, starvation, you know. They say they don't need um, the, the gas from Russia and all that thing, but it's the masses that's going to pay daily for all these things. So they're causing a kind of starvation, you know, they, they've laid a siege on, on their citizens. Why? In order for them to achieve a certain goal. And that goal they want to achieve this time around is that of branding you, of putting something into your body. And that thing is a chip. I can't make mention of it. You can go look up the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, the 16th verse. It tells you about what that thing is. Without that thing, you can't buy, you can't sell. You know, let me just put it like this. It's a, it's a micro, okay, and cheap. Okay, let me just put it like, put the two words together. Whatever it gives you, that's what it is. You know, it looks like a grain of rice and it's going to be inserted under your skin. With that, you buy, you sell. Okay. So at this time, they did the same thing in the past to our people. They were besieged for two years and the 1,000 men, women and children inside were, being, were beginning to starve. 
In desperation, the Jewish revolutionaries killed themselves rather than surrender to the Romans. And this is speaking of the Sicarii. Okay, that's a sect of the of of the Jews who actually caused all this hell. Actually, but that's another that's another lesson. It says the Romans then destroyed Jerusalem, annexed Judea as a Roman province, and systematically drove the Jews from Palestine. That land, Palestine, okay, Palestine is Israel. At the time, it used to be called Philistine. In the Bible, it's known as Philistine, okay. And you know that they have always been our neighbors, you know, we've always had that going and coming, you know, in which they are a tribe of, of the sons of Ham. Now it says, after 73 AD, AD, Hebrew history would only be the history of the diaspora, that is the spread, you know, the scattering, as the Jews and their worldview spread over Africa, Asia and Europe. So that's how we got into that land known as nigeria today we fled for our lives you know because the so-called white man you know he had us man they had us you know we had to flee so we fled into different parts of the world but majorly we fled into west africa where we find ourselves today so now going back to what i have here now you can see this was what the so-called white man used to post back then it said to be sold on the board the ship i can't see what he wrote today tuesday of may next then but what you should see says fine hebos hebos so the word ebo itself comes from what do you call it it comes from the root word of um hebrews you see so you see it says fine hebos which means hebrews you can see it again that's another image and that land that we find ourselves today that land okay it used it used to it used to go by the name kingdom of judah okay or wider slave coast because these so-called devils they knew that after we dispersed majority of us we came to seek refuge in this western part of africa you know all the way down to the south so they came right here and started picking us again as slaves and taking us away so you see as the yorubas and the Igbos are of one family that's how we are connected to the ivory coast to liberia to ghana to congo all those are our brothers man they are the hebrew israelites that are scattered okay so you see that's another image showing you the coast slave coast wider now one thing you should know is africa itself used to be called um africa itself used to be called um um ethiopia okay the whole of africa used to be called ethiopia now they started calling it africa because an italian general of the name um leo scipione africanos you know he won a battle against Hannibal, okay, and it became, it became, let's say, it named, it named Africa after his name. That's why Africa has the name Africa, due to his name, Africanos, you know, he called it Africa. But the original name used to be Ethiopia. So as you can see, the ocean also used to be known as the Ethiopian Ocean, you know. This lesson, I would have taken this lesson to all different. I had more things that I wanted to explain because, you know, that siege that's been spoken of, you know, that siege is also spoken of in the Bible. You know, our Savior, Yahweh Shai, you know, he, he, kept, he made us aware of that siege. You know, it's spoken of in the book of, um, of Matthew um, 24, you know, from the 15th verse. It's also spoken of in the book of Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 26th verse. You know, you can go look it up for yourself. I wouldn't go into it because I don't want this lesson to be too long, you know. And you can see that's Ethiopia. You see, Africa used to be known as Ethiopia, Ethiopian Ocean. 
You see, Ethiopia superior and Ethiopia inferior. And why am I saying this? Wait, there are some things I'm missing. Can these are some excerpts from from um from historian historian Josephus from his book The Great Roman Jewish War, sixty six to seventy A.D. It says General Vespasian and his son Caesar Titus fought against the Jews. Millions of Jews fled into Africa, among other places, fleeing from Roman persecution and starvation during the siege. So you see, <laughs> an historian also got hold of that. This is another historian. It says Roman historian Tacitus on the Jews. It says many again say that they were a race of Ethiopian origin who in the time of King Cephus were driven by fear and hatred of their neighbors to seek a new dwelling place. Now, the reason why I mentioned Ethiopia and you, um, I was telling you, I showed you all these maps of Ethiopia is because it's recorded in the Bible as well, you know? That's why we always need to go to the Bible for, what do you call it? For, for answers because the Bible contains everything. The Yorubas and the Igbos, they are of the same origin. You know, before they were scattered into various parts of the world, they, they, they went majorly to West Africa. They were then taking slaves and taken to America and other parts of the world. Now, this is the book of um, um, Zephaniah, the third chapter, the tenth verse. It says, From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant. Even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring my offering. So you see, who are the daughter of his dis the, 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 um, dispersed? That's um, the Israelite. You see, and it's very important because I told you about the name of our Savior being Yahweh Shai and not Jesus because he is a Hebrew. He is of, of the tribe of Judah. And there is a prophecy that lets us know that the pure language is going to be given back to us because you can't make mention of his name without speaking it in the hebrew that is the pure language remember when um apostle paul before he was called paul it was he was called saul you know let me just get that scripture real quick that's in the book of acts Excuse me. This is the book of um, Acts 26, the 14th verse. It says, when we were all fallen to the earth, he was going to persecute the, uh, the, the followers of our Savior, Yahweh Shai. And the Savior, our Savior appeared to him. He fell down to the ground. It says, and when they were falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, So, so, why, perse why persecutest me? It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks, the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am. He didn't say Jesus because the letter J never existed then. He was speaking in the Hebrew tongue. He said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. So you see, it's very, very important, you know, to keep note of that name. And why am I showing you is because the verse right here, the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, the ninth verse, it says, for then will I return to the people of pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. So you see, <laughs> there is a prophecy that says in the, in the end of days, we're going to call upon the name of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is going to return to us on a uh, pure language. Okay. And this language has been returned. The Hebrew Israelites Okay, we are speaking this language, and this language is the Paleo Hebrew. It's known as the Lashwan Kadash. You know, when we say Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai, Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh in the name. Name means Sham. In the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. 
You know, that's the pure language. That's the pure tongue. That's the name in which power is. You know, there is no name in Jesus. That name was forced onto us by the so-called white man. Just like we read, they forced all their ways onto us. They beat the living hell out of us, beat the, the, the truth that we knew, and they forced us into this their, 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 their religion, which is Christianity. Okay? Christianity is a renaissance, um, is a renaissance, um, um, what do you call it? Um, religion. And this goes back to Constantino, Constantinople's in 325 AD, um, 325, is it AD? Yes. 325 AD, you know, when they, when they held the, the council of Nicaea, that's when they amalgamated all the pagan religions of that time and they, they, they rebranded it and they called it Christianity, you know? So the word Christianity also, you know, is being mentioned in the book of Acts and the, the, the Christians were, um, they were the followers of our savior, Yahushai, were first called Christians in Antioch. And that word Christian was just to mock them, the followers of the uh, Amashiach, you know? And that word Christian in its pure form is going to be Amashiach, or Mashiachi, okay? It has nothing to do with the Christian that we have today. The Christian that we have today goes deep back into another religion, the worship of a deity known as Christos Serapis. But that's another lesson for another time. So, you know, I'm doing this lesson, so you have to wake up, man, because there is no time, man, that the son of us, uh, of our, sa uh, our savior, the son of the most high, Yahweh Shai, is coming back, and this time is coming to destroy the wicked and also our people that are following the wicked, man. It's coming to destroy all, you know? And it's a very terrible thing to fall into the hands of our Savior, man. Let me see. Oh, let me see. Or oh, Todd. in the book of anyway it doesn't matter i was looking for a scripture but it's all good man so i was speaking of um ethiopia there is another scripture in the book of amos amos the ninth chapter and the seventh verse that's why it says are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So you see, <laughs> we've, we've scattered amongst the Ethiopians, you know, which are this, the real Africans, man. You know, the Egyptians, the all these people, these, these are the real Africans and they are different from us. They are of a different root. They are the children of Ham, okay? And Ham means hot, if I'm not mistaken, you know? And we are the children of Sham, of the lineage of um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we shouldn't be calling ourselves Yoruba, Igbo, whatever. This is our true root, okay? Because <laughs> this is what it is, man, you know? So we used to be one before the so-called white man came in with his witchcraft and he tore us apart, man. So, well, I just wanted to share this lesson. Hopefully, it was edifying to the spirit and power of the Most High, Yahweh, Shemiah, Shai. On to the next one. Shalom.